Okay, so uh, I will reveal the uh, options and you do it by yourself and I'll explain uh, the, the answers and why the answer, why a certain answer is correct and why the rest are wrong. So euglena is a unicellular organism that feeds on bacteria and uses CO2, so carbon dioxide, as a carbon source, which describes the nutrition of this organism. Okay, so let's go through the options. First of all, um, if you didn't know, euglena is one of these uh, creatures that you need to remember for the IB because they're special and you'll see why. Uh, this is how they look like, by the way. So what is an autotroph, first of all? So an autotroph is a creature, let me show you here. An autotroph would be a creature that um, is like a plant that is able to survive by photosynthesis. Okay, so all plants, basically all plants, there are some exceptions, but basically all plants, like 99%, are considered autotrophs because they survive by, by making their own food. By, um, by using photosynthesis. So in the formal definition, it would be just classified as uh, using inorganic matter to make organic matter. So inorganic matter, that is matter that is basically like non-living. You can consider inorganic as like non-living. So for example, sunlight, water, carbon dioxide. So in, in with that definition, you can think plants use inorganic matter like sunlight and stuff like that to make organic matter and organic matter is themselves so they use the sunlight through photosynthesis to build themselves um, because anything living is organic okay so that's what an autotroph is um, now we know that euglena are technically autotrophs because they you see the, you see the reason why they're so green as you can see here is because the thing that makes them green is these little organelles these are basically, by the way, these are like cell size. They're really small. Um, these little green things inside are called chloroplasts. And if you've learned before, chloroplasts are uh, the organelle in plant cells that allow them to do photosynthesis. So we know that euglena kind of behave like a plant. They use these little organelles, chloroplasts, to absorb sunlight and other inorganic substances, such as like carbon dioxide, as they say here, and water, to do photosynthesis and survive. So in a way, they're autotrophs, but we can't stop right there. We gotta keep going. So we know technically autotroph is so far okay, but is it true that it's autotrophic only? Could it be something else as well? So let's look at B, uh, heterotrophic. What does heterotrophic mean? By the way, if you like break apart this word, autotroph means self-feeding, which means plants can basically self-feed self, self -feed by using sunlight and things like that. They don't need to eat something else in order to survive. So like plants don't have a mouth, right? So therefore they can feed themselves. They don't have to go and eat something else like humans do. Okay, now next, uh, uh, heterotroph. Heterotroph, if you break it down, refers to um, eating something else. Something else, something else feeding. So it's literally feeding by eating something else. That's basically like humans. We need, we have a mouth for a reason, right? Because we don't, we can't do photosynthesis like uh, like an autotrophic creature and create our own food just by standing in the sun, right? We need to eat something. So that's what heterotroph is. They obtain food from organic matter. So we know plants use inorganic matter like sunlight to make themselves. They are organic and we can eat plants, right? So we obtain food from eating organic matter. We can also eat animals because animals, some other, some animals like for example, antelopes eat plants, right? And so by eating plants, they survive, but we can also eat the animals that eat plants because they're also part of organic matter. Organic matter is anything that is living. So an heter heterotroph obtains its food from eating living things, whereas an autotroph doesn't. Okay, so now let's go back to euglena. So we know it can be an autotroph, but technically it can also be a heterotroph because they eat bacteria, as it says here. Euglena is a unicellular organism that feeds on bacteria. And, big, and bacteria is a living organism, right? So by definition, they also fit a heterotroph. So if you had to put little bacteria here, these cells, these euglena, will wrap around these bacteria and digest them, like, like humans eating a steak or something. They will literally eat them. So technically they're both, but wait, we'll get to the exact reason why they're considered both. Um, so, sap could, so, so far we got A and B, um, 
is kind of incorrect because they could be both autotrophic and heterotrophic, not only autotrophic or not only heterotrophic. Um, but what about C? Could they be saprotrophic? So saprotrophic, if you didn't know, is basically an organism that eats dead material and recycles it. So uh, saprotrophs include bacteria, like this one, or mushrooms. Okay, so They break down dead things to recycle them um, into soil, which basically plants can use later again. So these would not be considered um, saprotrophs because they're not bacteria or mushrooms. And they don't recycle stuff, they just eat stuff to live. But yeah, this image right here is a mushroom representing saprotrophs. Now, option D says both. So we know this is correct, but... Oh, wait one sec. Forgot to remove the thing here. Okay. So we think it's D, but I just want to clarify why. The only way you can be considered both an autotroph and an heterotroph is when you can survive without one of them. Okay? You see what I mean? Like, you can't be a heterotroph if if you if um you can't be considered a heterotroph if you can't survive only with being a heterotroph do you see what i mean like if you were um so that's why they're both because when autotrophic option is not there for example say i take away the sunlight then these euglena can still survive by eating bacteria but if i take the bacteria away and there's a sun so they can't be a heterotroph they can still survive solely with sunlight by doing photosynthesis so we can, we can um, classify them as both autotrophic and heterotrophic because they can survive when one of the options are gone. Okay? That's why they're considered both. So if you can, if, if for example, we were to take away the sun and now all of a sudden there's still bacteria, but they depend on sunlight and they can't survive without sunlight even, even if there's bacteria, then they won't be considered both autotrophic and heterotrophic. They're only autotrophic and heterotrophic when they can survive without one of the options. And you'll see in the next question why this matters. So option D is correct for this one. Okay, the next question is is really related to this. And um, I hope you understand the next one. So I'll open the options for you. So the Venus flytrap, or the scientific name Dionyaya miscipula, is a photosynthetic plant. It obtains nitrogen, but not energy, by digesting captured plant, captured insects. So this is a black and white image from the website, so I'll just, I got a better image here in case it's not so clear. You know these plants, they're pretty cool because they, they're like plants, but they can also eat stuff. So, um, but many people get really confused with this one. Many people think that because they're plants that can eat, they're technically, they, they should technically be considered both autotrophic and heterotrophic, just like this one, because they can both make their own food because they're plants. And they have these mouths, they can eat flies. So they should be heterotrophic as well. So they should be autotrophic and heterotrophic. But guess what? There is no option like that. These, even though it really seems like it, they are not autotrophic and heterotrophic. There are only one of them. Now, so which one do you think that is? So let's look at the options. Um, so we won't look at the options just yet. First off, they're definitely they can definitely do photosynthesis. So let's bring this here. They, they can definitely do this process. They're definitely autotrophic because they, they can definitely use sunlight to make energy and survive. Okay, so this is definitely the case. Now, how about the heterotrophic? So let's bring this down. So the question does say it obtains nitrogen but not energy, keyword, not energy. So even though they can eat these flies, by eating these flies, they do not obtain energy. They only obtain nitrogen. So they, this implies that they cannot survive without sunlight. They need sunlight. They do not get energy by eating these flies. So for example, let me bring this down. You see what I'm getting to, this is important. Many people get confused by this. So for example, if you were to remove sunlight for these Venus flytraps, they would die. Because even though they can eat these, these insects, this will not allow them to survive because they do not get energy from them, just nitrogen. And you need energy to survive. 
Conversely, if you take away uh, the flies, they will still survive. Because uh, if, if you give them sunlight and take away the flies, they will still survive. Because they can still do photosynthesis for energy. So this is why they can't be both heterotrophic and autotrophic. Because without sunlight or without being an autotroph, they will die. So therefore, they're only considered to be autotrophs. Because they can't survive without the other option. Okay, this is a very, very tricky one, but this is super, super important. So they're definitely autotrophs. Now, why are they not secondary consumers? Okay, so a consumer is something that eats something else. Okay, in basic terms. So secondary means like it's not the first one to eat. Um, and that's not true because um, a secondary consumer is normally... Uh, so for example, if you have a plant and then you have something that eats the plant, that would be considered a primary consumer. Okay, if you have something to eat that animal that just ate that plant, that will be a secondary consumer. So clearly this one doesn't do that. So it's definitely not a secondary consumer. A secondary consumer is normally like it's, it's normally a carnivore, something that eats meat. Um, this would be more like a this would be more considered a primary consumer because it eats uh, like flies and stuff maybe. Okay, how about um, but technically not primary consumer at the same time because they're plants. So immediately when you're a plant, you're considered a producer, not a not a consumer. So therefore, A and C would be incorrect because they're not consumers; they're producers. And the last one, saprotrophs, I showed you above. Saprotrophs or are, uh, sorry, saprotrophs are mushrooms and bacteria, and they recycle stuff. So this is not a mushroom nor a bacteria, and therefore it is not a saprotroph. So therefore the answer is B. Okay, so um, this is it for this video. In my next one, I will do part two, where I'll just be doing some more random questions. But these two questions go really hand in hand. Uh, I think they're super important to understand. So hopefully that was useful.